Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. And welcome to the second service, the Mass for the second Sunday in Lent. Today is a day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Our theme for reflection at this service is call on the Lord at all times. Call on the Lord at all times. The readings are drawn from the lectionary. We'll begin the service by standing and singing the processional hymn, Methodist Hymn 165. your hearts and not your garments and turn to the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness Amen, Amen. my dear Christian people this morning we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent and we'll always encounter God in the scriptures that we hear. Let us ask him that the prayers that we offer and in the sharing of his body and blood we would encounter him too. And may we grow in love for God and our fellow man. During the season of Lent, let us pray that you and I will draw closer to God through our practices of prayer, fasting, arms given, and a right walk with Christ. As we do penance and as we live transformed and renewed lives for Christ. May the shining light of Jesus Christ free those who are trapped in the darkness of sin. 
let us pray that the Holy Spirit himself will quicken and enable the leaders of the nations, especially our president, to choose to listen to his conviction and walk in his light as they work for peace, for justice and for freedom, for truth, for unity, equity and reverence for human life. And may they respond generously through their programs and their policies to the poor, helpless, and marginalized in our society. As we celebrate Commonwealth Day, we pray that God's favor and blessings will rest upon the leaders and the people of the Commonwealth of Nations, and that peace, justice, freedom, and prosperity will reign among them as they serve and strive to, de to deliver common, a common future. We pray for world peace. May warring nations use dialogue and detent to resolve their differences and beat their assaults into plowshares. And let us pray fervently for Russia and Ukraine. Let us remember those who have asked us to pray for them. The sick, the poor, bereaved and sorrowing, prisoners and indeed all who are in any form of trouble may our god in heaven touch them heal them provide for them may you console and strengthen them as the case may be and we pray that god's blessings and favor will rest on all those celebrating various birthdays anniversaries and thanksgivings let us remember uncle fred as this comfort us and to Regina, Joyce, and Ayele. Finally, we'll pray that the faithful departed may dwell forever in the shelter of the Most High. Let us bring before God Dr. Paul Arthur for the repose of his soul. In the silence of our hearts this morning, my dear Christian friends, let us bring our own prayers, our own intentions before our God in heaven. He is here with us. He bids us free. He would hear us. He would answer us. Let us pray to him. Let us pray. Remember your mercies, Lord, your tender kindness from ages past. Do not let our enemies triumph over us, O Lord. Deliver Israel from all her distress. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As an act of penance, we'll chant the Lent prose.
O Thou Chief Cornerstone, Right hand of the Father, Way of salvation, gate of life celestial, Cleanse thou our sinful souls from all defilement. Sent captive, taken on resisting, falsely accused, and for us in the sentence. Save us, we pray, the Jesus, our Redeemer. Our God, who is compassionate and merciful to his children who are repentant of their sins, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life eternal in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray in this Lenten season for the gift of integrity and for the grace to respond to the word of God. Father of light, in you is found no shadow of change, but only the fullness of life and limitless truth. Open our hearts to the voice of your word and free us from the original darkness that shadows our vision. Restore our sight that we may look upon your son, who calls us to repentance and a change of heart. Enlighten us with your word, that we may find the way to your glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of Uncle Fred. Come for to Usajiman, and to Regina, Joyce, and Ayeli, your servant and handmaids, 
who recall the day of their birth and rejoice in your gift of life and love, family and friends. Bless them with your presence and surround them with your love that they may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the faithful departed. Lord God, you are the glory of believers and the life of the just. Your son redeemed us by dying and rising to life again. Our brother, Dr. Paul Arthur, was faithful and believed in our own resurrection. Give to him the joys and blessings of the life to come. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us please sit, sit as we invite our brothers and sisters to lead us in a time of praise to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We just sat down, but as many as can, shall we please be on our feet as we continue this morning's worship service with our, a time of praise and worship? Hallelujah. Amen. I will praise Him. I will praise the Lord. I will praise Him. I will praise the Lord. Yes, I will praise my Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I will praise my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will praise Him. We will praise the Lord. Yes, we will praise Him. We will praise the Lord. Ooh, we will praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We will praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Yes, I will praise Him. I will praise the Lord. Yeah. 
ancient of days, as old as you as old as you are, as as you are. forever you, you remain the same. You are the ancient of days, ancient of days, as old as you are, as old him now, exalting our Lord. He is the Lord of all, the King of kings. There is none like unto our God. In our own words, let's exalt him, joining the heavenly host to exalt our Lord this morning, to bring unto him praise, for indeed he alone deserves to be exalted. Bless the Lord and exalt him this morning. Bring, bring to thee. 
Father, this morning we join all things to praise you. For indeed, O oh Lord, you are the maker of all things. This morning we say blessing and honor and glory and power be unto you. We consider it a privilege, O oh Lord, to also worship and adore you. To you, O oh Lord, be glory. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Shall we please be seated? We'll take the scripture readings. Our first Bible reading is taken from Genesis chapter 15, reading from verse 1 through to 12, and then verse 17 and 18. Genesis chapter 15, reading from verse 1 to 12, and then 17 and 18. Let us hear the word of God. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliza of Damascus? And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of air of the Chaldeans to give you the land to take possession of it. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I shall gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abraham brought, it, brought all these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then the birds of prey came down on the carcass, but Abraham drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful cloud of darkness came over him. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking breezer with a blazing torch appeared and passed over the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said, To your descendants I give you this land from the word of Egypt to the great river of Euphrates. Here ends the reading of the word. Our second Bible reading is taken from Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 17 through to chapter 4, verse 1. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17 through to chapter 4, verse 1. Join together in the following example, brothers and sisters 
and just as you have as, as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I've often told you before, and now tell you again, even the tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lonely bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord. In this way, dear friends, here ends the reading of the word. The choir will lead us in chanting the appointed psalm for today, the Psalm 27.
The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of salvation according to St. Luke, chapter 13, reading from verse 31 through to 35. Glory be to you, O Lord. The gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13, reading from verse 31 through to 35. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go and tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you are not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Our hymn before the sermon is the Methodist hymn 848. 848. <laughs>
Please let us sit. And I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray, my dear Christian friends, as I always do, that God will bless our encounter with his word today. That his Holy Spirit himself will enable us to hear it, understand it, and to put it into practice. Amen. On this second Sunday of Lent, my dear Christian friends, the church wishes to encourage us not to revel in the material comforts of this world. Rather, we should march towards the promised land and our future glory, pursuing spiritual things. Our first lesson from Genesis 15 verse 1 following narrates the revelation of the glory and splendor of the future of Abraham. Your descendants will be like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. And can you count them? Due to his faith, God revealed to Abraham the glory that will be his in the future. And he also sealed this with a covenant, assuring him that he will fulfill the promise that he, God, has made to Abraham. And we know our God. He fulfills his promise to his children. Children who continue to hold faith in him and also walk in his ways. And I repeat, not only faith in him, but walk in his will. Faith, we are told, is a prerequisite of God fulfilling his promise. And Abraham put his faith, his trust in God. And God did for him what he has promised. For indeed, my dear Christian friends, whatever promises, whatever vision that we have, whatever things that we desire, God will fulfill it. Let us have faith in him. And let us be obedient to his word. And it will come to pass. In Jesus' name. Amen. And in our first reading, we are told, a trance fell upon Abraham. And in prayer, he experienced God who sealed his faith with a covenant. We always hear that our God is a covenant God. Yes. And the rites of the people of the ancient Near East prescribed a sacrificial animal to be divided into half. And this is done by the contracting parties. And they walk in between the quartered animal. Stating that they should be dismembered like the animal should they fail to keep the covenant. That's what the people of the ancient Near East did. They walked through a quartered animal. And if I don't keep my covenant, that is what should happen to me. But in our reading, it is God who sealed the covenant by passing through the pieces in the form of a smoking pot and a flaming fire. It was God who did it. And we say so because fire symbolizes God's presence. And what comes to mind easily is Pentecost. We are told the spirit descended, God descended on the apostles like tongues of fire and he gave them power power to do wondrous things in his name but Abraham was not asked to walk between the pieces why was Abraham asked not to walk between the pieces it meant that God's promise was unconditional and gratuitous God does not tell his children I'll give you a reward if you do what I ask God gives his children his blessings without asking for anything in exchange. God loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Even when we were sinful, that is when God sent his son. 
He didn't wait for us to be righteous. So God's love and covenant with us is unconditional, gratuitous. It is not by our own strength that any of us should go about and boast. So although Abraham himself had been demonstrating faith through his actions, it was not his actions which brought about God fulfilling the covenant. It was his faith and belief in God. Romans 4 verse 1 to 5 states, What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? If in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited and some authorities would say reckoned to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God and it was credited. He was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work but trusts in God, who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. So you see, you and I can safely call ourselves righteous people because of our faith in Christ Jesus. But our faith to elicit good works from us. And if your faith does not elicit good works from you, then check yourself. Faith in Christ should definitely elicit good works and obedience to the word of God from a child of God. And if it does not, then question yourself about that faith. Then your faith is a fake faith. We too can have a right relationship with God by trusting him, my dear brothers and sisters. Our outward actions, our church attendance, our prayer, our good deeds will not by themselves make us right with God. A right relationship with God is based on faith, which is the heartfelt inner confidence that God is who he says he is and does not say, what he is not. And right actions will follow naturally as byproducts. If you have faith in Christ, your right actions will follow naturally. And I'll repeat if you don't, it doesn't follow naturally as a byproduct, then question yourself again. Because our faith should always lead us onto good works. This is why God demonstrated his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 verse 8. And God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. If God is to count our sins against us, my dear Christian friends, who will stand it? I'm sure I'll be the number one who will be what condemned. Who would stand it if God is to count our sins against us? And God has given us to, because of reconciling himself to us, he has given unto us a ministry of reconciliation. That's what 2 Corinthians 5.19 tells us. So as Christians, we go out there with the word of God to reconcile this world unto Jesus Christ, just as he has reconciled himself to us that is the ministry we have been given as children of god and we need to take it very serious and be able to do it to the glory of our god and our king so therefore my dear christian friends if we behave wrongly and do not follow god's ways god will never abandon us but we will surely ruin our own lives if we sin and turn away from him. So it is important that we follow Abraham's example of faith and we experience the Lord who is our light and our salvation, which is our psalm for today. And you know, length is a season of many graces. For us to abandon our evil ways and our sins, and turn to our God who would abundantly pardon. 
for it's of great mercy and repents of ill that will come unto us. A time of renewal. A time of returning to God. A time of having a right walk with God. For indeed, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, which, which was read as our epistle, a second lesson, Paul challenges us. He wishes us to pursue Christ-likeness by following his Paul's pattern and example. He says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. But I would dare say that that is not the whole we don't copy Paul through and through because in Philippians chapter 3, verse 4, he himself has stated that he was not perfect. So as much as we're imitating Paul, Jesus Christ should be our standard. You know, there are so many human beings that we look to as our heroes. But I can assure you, my dear Christian friends, they are human. So when they disappoint us, let's not be bothered and think that Christ, what they call it, um, is not using them. They are human. It's only Christ who is perfect. So let us take them as our heroes. But let us look to Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So that we don't get disappointed because God does not disappoint his children. It's we who disappoint our own selves. But you know, Paul focused his life on being like Christ. And so we should also focus our lives on being like Christ. Bit by bit. Sometimes we are up, sometimes we are down. But we're struggling on, onto that perfection. And I can show you, me, I always say that we read that perfection when we get to heaven. Because just after church, somebody has annoyed me. Doing things that I found it in my heart to forgive. So that perfection is bit by bit. That's why Paul could tell people they should follow his example as a testimony of his character. Can we do the same, my dear brothers and sisters? Can we tell people to follow us as a testimony of our character? What kind of follower would a new Christian become if he or she imitates you? What kind of follower would a new Christian be if he or she decides to imitate you? Let's go and reflect and think about this. Paul again went on to criticize not only the Judaizers, but the self-indulgent Christians. So, you know, there are certain self-indulgent Christians. People who claim to be Christians, but do not live up to Christ's model of servanthood and self-sacrifice. These people satisfy their own desires, even before thinking about the needs of others. I very much love this phrase of the World, Church, World Council of Churches. Live simple that others may simply live. Live simple, that others may simply live. So the opulence that we see around, especially with what we call it, um, the weddings and other things, when people are poor, I'm not saying give your money to the poor. Don't show your wealth among poor people. It annoys them. And I can assure you to annoy God. Enjoy yourself in your own small corner. But live simple, that others may simply live. That is also a message of Lent to us. That's why we're talking about arms given in Lent. That is works of love. So that when you fast, the little that you save from the fasting is not for you to reinvest. It is for you to give to the unfortunate, our unfortunate brothers and sisters. And there are very many. I'm not talking about lazy people who don't want to work. But there are so many unfortunate brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ whom you can help with what you keep and fast for Lent. So anyone who fasts and keeps that money, shame unto you. My dear brothers and sisters, freedom in Christ does not mean freedom to be selfish. It means we must take every opportunity to serve and to become the best of human beings. That's what God desires from Christians the best of human beings, best in character, best in everything. People who impact the life of others. 
and who others can imitate. And Paul again in our second lesson gets tough with people who live to appease their appetites. Anyone who believes so strongly in his or her personal greatness becomes a slave to pride. If you believe in your own personal greatness, you are a slave to pride. Throw out all those things. Get them off. And that's why I always say, I love so much our Catholic um, brothers and fathers. I know someone with three PhDs. He will just tell you, I'm Reverend Father, this. But some of us are so puffed up. Doctor, doctor, professor, this and take. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's yours, you've taken it. But has, has it got any relation to your Christian spirituality? And I love someone, I won't call her name now. All that she is proud is when she, they call her Osofo. Only her pride is that Osofo doesn't want to be called by a doctor and those things. Well, it's your choice. But when you get puffed up, you become a slave to your pride. And he writes, what horrible people these must be. I'm not saying it to It is Paul who, was, who is writing it. It's Paul who is calling people horrible people. He says, so concerned with earthly trivia, that during worship, it is in the Bible, their mind wander, so consumed with work that worship is inconvenient, so busy planning the next party that there is no time for prayer. Paul says, if you do that, you are headed for destruction because all you can think about in this life here on earth and not eternity. You're not thinking about spiritual things. You're not thinking about eternity. You are thinking about your stomach. It's important for us as human beings, my dear Christian friends, to think about spiritual things and eternity. And that's what Lent is about. To remember, oh man, that you are dust, and unto dust you return. Whatever and whoever you are. And I had this very funny thing. I said, as soon as I do this, get into the hole. Everything is gone. So, what would you do when you lose your eternal salvation? Let us continue to seek after God and the things of God. I'm not saying throw away the material things that God gives you as a gift. Enjoy them, but seek after God and walk in his ways. Let us not spend so much of our time on things which will not endure in eternity. Seeking earthly pleasures or satisfying our physical desires. Let us set our minds on knowing Christ, not on the pursuits of material things of this world. Lent should be a very wonderful reminder for us, my dear Christian friends. We are told that citizens of any Roman colony were expected to promote the interest of Rome and maintain the dignity of that city. So in the same way, my dear Christian friends, you and I are citizens of heaven. And we ought to promote heaven's interests on earth and lead lives worthy of heavenly citizenship. Too many Christians have failed to transfer their citizenship to heaven as we seek earthly pleasures and treasures instead of heavenly ones. We must remember, beloved, that we are citizens of heaven where our Lord Jesus Christ lives and he will come again. He will definitely come again because he is always true to his word and his word is yea and amen. So have you transferred your citizenship to heaven? How are you promoting heaven's interest here on earth? Let us stand firm in the Lord. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. And remember that this world is not our own. Let us focus on the fact that Christ will bring everything under his control. Let us steadfastly resist the negative influences of temptation, sin, false teachings, and pride. Let us preserve 
our faith and not lose hearts or give up because God's promises to give us strength and character to stay true to him. Do we believe that? God will surely do it. This Lenten season, we are in the second Sunday, offers us great opportunity to make sacrifices to prepare us for the future glory through our prayers, through our fasting, through our good works, through our reflections, our self-denials. It is a time for us to grow in grace and in spirituality and maturity. So this season must also be spiritually attentive. Let us be spiritually attentive in order that we will know Christ very well and commune with him. If we understand that we will be better positioned to partake in the glory of the resurrection on Easter Sunday, then my dear brothers and sisters, let us remain faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ because he's our help, he's our light, he's our salvation. Peace be on the, unto you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand. And let us together affirm our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit for the intercession. At every service, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we encounter Christ in his word. I want you to reflect on the sermon you have just heard. There was a word in it for you. Let the Holy Spirit begin to convict you of that word. And let us ask for grace to amend our lives to live in accordance with God's word. As we enter into a time of prayer, I ask you to rend your heart and not your garments. And let us turn to the Lord our God, for he is gracious and merciful. He is slow to anger and of great kindness. Even as we encounter our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the word that we have heard, and in the sharing of the Eucharist, I ask your prayers that we all may grow in love for God and for our fellow human beings. Lord, in your mercy, I ask your prayer that through the devotions of Lent, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and a right walk with God. We'll be penitent. We'll live transformed and renewed lives. 
and that we may draw ever closer to our God and our Father in this journey of life. Lord, in your mercy, I ask your prayers for our dear nation, Ghana, and for all the leaders of this nation, especially our president, that quickened by God's Holy Spirit, they will listen to his conviction, walk in his light as they work for peace, justice, freedom, truth, unity, fairness, and the dignity of human life. In their undertakings, may they respond generously to the poor, the helpless, and all those marginalized in our society. Lord, in your mercy. Today is Commonwealth Day. And as we celebrate that day, we pray for God's favor and blessings upon all nations of the Commonwealth and their leaders. And that God's peace, his justice, and prosperity will reign amongst all these nations as they strive for a common future. Let us also at this service pray for world peace. Let us bring all trouble spots before God, asking that goodwill and dialogue will be used to resolve our differences And we pray for a cessation of the war, especially between Russia and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, I ask your prayers for all those who have asked for our prayers at this service. Let us remember Uncle Fred on the occasion of his 76th birthday as he thanks God for his faithfulness. His hymn of praise is the Presbyterian hymn 11. Let us bring before God our sister who is thanking God for adding another year to the lives of her two children in January and February respectively. Her psalm of praise is the Psalm 91 verse 1. We bring before the throne of grace a member and her family as they give praise to God for adding another year to her life on 17th February. They ask for God's wisdom, grace, guidance, and protection in the years ahead. Their psalm of praise is the Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5. We join Mrs. Comfort Uzwa Jiman and her family in thanking God for seeing them through the year 2021 successfully and for adding another year to her life. Their psalm of praise is Psalm 138, 1 and 2. We join Auntie Regina, who is thanking God for adding another year to her life. Her hymn of praise is Methodist hymn 399, verse 1. We bring before the throne of grace Joyce and Ayeli, who are grateful to God for another birthday and for his grace and mercies in the past year. Their prayer of hope is that the God who is able to make all grace abound towards them will ensure that they have sufficiency in all things in order that they may have abundance for every good work. We join also Brigadier, Brigadier General Pra, retired, who also celebrates his birthday. I ask your prayers 
for the repose of the soul of Dr. Paul Arthur, who passed on to glory 20 years ago. His family is thankful to God for his faithfulness to them. Their hymn of praise is the Methodist hymn numbered 10. The hymn of praise for all the thanksgiving is ancient and modern 522, the first stanza. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of his grace. Lord, in your mercy. And I invite you to bring your own prayer requests and intentions before the throne of grace. Trusting that God is with us at this service. He's a loving God and Father. He wants to hear from us. For he desires to give us good gifts. And so when we call upon him in faith, he will answer our prayer. As we wind down our prayers, let us together say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us exchange the sign of peace. Our offertory hymn is the Methodist hymn 475, 475.
we'll continue with the Methodist hymn 155. 155. Christian friends, let us pray for our nation, Ghana, its people and leaders, that we will be a nation after God, and He will see us through and bless us. We also pray for the Commonwealth of Nations, that God's graces will go with the people of the Commonwealth and its leaders, that will pursue peace, unity, and love. Let us pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries that God's graces and favor will rest upon them. Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that this, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice as our heart. Amen, Lord, make us holy. May this Eucharist take away our sins, that we may be prepared to celebrate the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, accept these gifts we offer. For Dr. Paul, Arthur, our brother, may they free him from sin and bring him to the happiness of life in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord is here. Is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever loving God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. This great season of grace is your gift to your family to renew us in spirit. You give us strength to purify our hearts 
to control our desires, and so to serve you in freedom. You teach us how to live in this passing world, with our hearts set on the world that will never end. Now with all the saints and angels, we praise you forever as we say, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Father, we acknowledge your greatness. All your actions show your wisdom and love. You formed man in your own likeness and set him over the whole world to serve you, his creator, and to rule over all creatures. Even when he disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the power of death but helped all people to seek and find you. Again and again you offered a covenant to man and through the prophets taught him to hope for salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only son to be our savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. A man like us in all things, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners he proclaimed freedom. And to those in sorrow joy, in fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death. By rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. That we might live no longer for ourselves but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe, to complete his work on earth and bring us the fullness of grace. Father, may this Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings. Let them become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as we proclaim and celebrate the great mystery which he left us as an everlasting covenant. He always loved those who were his in the world. When the time came for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, he showed the death of his love. While they were at supper, he took bread said the blessings, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. Amen. In the same way, he took the cup filled with wine. He gave you thanks and giving the cup to his disciples said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Amen. My Lord and my God. Beloved, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand, and looking forward to his coming again in glory. We offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look upon the sacrifice which you have given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit, gather all who share in this one bread and one cup into one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Daniel Silvanus, our bishop, and all the bishops, all the participating churches of Accra Ray Church, Mark er Eric, your priests, and all the clergy everywhere. Remember those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Brigadier General Dan Fra, Uncle Fred, Comfort Usajiman, Auntie Regina, Joyce, and Ayele. Remember all of us gathered here in Accra Ray Church. Bless us, O oh God, in our undertaking. And bless all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, especially Dr. Paul Arthur, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter our heavenly inheritance in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and your apostles and saints, then in your kingdom, Free from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us all things that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father. So we have the courage and confidence to say, Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the Lamb's Supper. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen.
Communion hymn number 38, MHB 38. Continue with the hymn number 150. 150.
151. MHB 151. my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for these holy mysteries, which bring to us here on earth a share in the life to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord, accept the prayers and gift we offer for our brother, Dr. Paul Arthur. May your love and forgiveness free him from every trace of sin and keep him in that kingdom of light and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us together say the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a loving sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to love and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please let us sit for notices. I publish the bands between Emmanuel Nana Kofi Etuahini and Elizabeth Florence Christiana Hagen. This is the third and final announcement. So they have come to the front. So take your masks off so they can see you well. If anyone knows any just cause or impediment as to why this couple should not be joined in holy matrimony, he or she must contact the ministers. And please, as they prepare for the countdown, remember them in your prayers that God will continue to draw them into his love and provide them with the needed resources for their great day. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. This war in Ukraine seems to have taken over everything. But we are still reminding you that COVID-19 is real. And so please let us continue to enforce the protocols. Annual General Meeting. This year's Annual General Meeting is scheduled to take place on Sunday, 27th March 2022, immediately after the 8.30 a.m. joint service at Ridge. The agenda has been posted on the notice boards. The service at the Manette Chapel will start at 8 a.m. 
Members are encouraged to drop their prayer requests into the prayer boxes provided at the main entry points of the church. I'll schedule for Lenten meditation services. The Lenten meditation services are held at the Rich Church from Monday to Friday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. And this will continue till the end of the Lenten period. The Stations of the Cross would also be held here on Mondays from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. The services at Manette will be held every Thursday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please note the schedule of services and be guided accordingly. All the above services will be hybrid in person and online. The March Anavusi is under the theme Sow Seeds. Join us for Anavusi this Wednesday, 16th March at 6 p.m. with Richard Krab and Anna Yaakwe as our facilitators. This will be an online service, virtual. Prayer meeting. In line with Ephesians 6, 18a, which says, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. You are all invited to Manette's Congregational Church-wide weekly prayer sessions this and every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Methodist Presbyterian Confirmation Classes. These will start soon. Interested persons should register at the church office. The construction works have begun on the paved skirting around the church building from last Sunday. We apologize for the inconvenience this will cause. Members are requested to inform the clergy and the church office with contact, telephone numbers, and location of their sick, invalid persons and members of this church so we can arrange to pay them a visit. The workshop for all lay readers will start soon. Interested persons, both old and new, should leave their names and contact numbers at the church office. There will be a seasonal vigil here in the sanctuary on Saturday, 19th March, from 10 p.m. to Sunday, 4 a.m. The theme is God's promises and his sovereign timing. The resource person is Pastor Eddie Annan. The Legacy Series, A Well-Balanced Life. The Youth Fellowship presents the fifth edition of the Legacy Series, focusing on governance of organizations and nations. This comes off on Sunday, 20th March, 2022. Please join us to learn from the experience about balancing your Christian church, work, marriage, and public life. This will be in person in the ARC Hall basement and also on your YouTube channel. The time is 3.45 p.m. next Sunday. Funeral announcements. The death is reported of Mrs. Miranda Mason, a member of this church. Funeral arrangements will be announced later. The death is reported of Madame Selina Akusia Otinewa. Funeral arrangements will be announced later. She was the mother of Mrs. Josephine Enima Donko, mother-in-law of Mr. Samson Donko, grandmother of Nana Kenabiri, Nana Yabema, Kofi Apia Ose Ousu, and Kofi Dankwa Donko, all members of the Manet congregation. End of the announcements. Will all those celebrating their birthdays please come forward for the church's blessing? We'll sing the Methodist hymn 64 as they come.
let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, it is with a heart of thanksgiving that we join our brothers and sisters before the altar of grace to give thanks to you for another year added unto their lives. Father, in coming here, they are expressing their faith in you. They are acknowledging that it is you who has brought them thus far. And so, gracious Father, they continue to entrust themselves unto your care, that your mighty right hand will continue to lead them. Gracious Father, bless them with your choicest blessings. Open the windows of heaven. Grant their heart's desires. Grant them long life. Grant them good health. Bless and prosper the work of their hands. But above all, may they grow in faith in their walk with you. May they draw ever closer unto you, and may their lives be pleasing in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless and keep you you and your loved ones, today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Please humble your heads and ask for God's blessings. Lord, we rejoice that you are our creator and ruler. As we call upon your generosity, renew and keep us in your love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you this day throughout the week, together with your loved ones, and always. Amen. Amen. My dear Christian friends, the Mass of the second Sunday of Lent is over. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All too soon, our time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord has come to an end. Our recessional hymn is the Methodist hymn 736. <laughs> 